Hey guys, we got another wonderful Tech Nitwit Productions video for you tonight. We have a TG01 cooling video. This thing is freaking awesome and one of our most requested videos on the channel. But we are going to try to stick this bad mamma jamma of a monster of a cooler in this case. Why don't you come and watch the video with me and see if I can do it, y'all. Hey guys, we're going to jump right into this video and we are going to try to stick this monster of a cooler in there. I'm going to go over some info real quick and get everything un unboxed and show you what we need to do and get everything on the table for you guys. And uh, real quick, I went with the upgraded Noctua fans. They're about 17 bones. You can go with the Redux or the, the B variant, and that's gonna you can find them between 13 and 15 bones. Both are going to be very awesome. If you go with the upgraded fans, you're going to get between 1 and 3 Celsius better cooling in this bad mamma jam of an HP computer. You will see where this goes in the install, and this is going to go to the CPU pin. There's going to be one that has four pins, if you guys can see that. This guy has four pins. This has to go to your CPU fan so it reads the RPMs and notices that the fan is still running. Your upgraded fan is going to get the one with the three pin. Just making that, you know, an FYI right now so you know that. The Noctua box does not come with screws that are long enough to work for any coolers for this weird socketed of a, of a mashup that HP has done. So you're going to need to get a screw kit. I got this, this Whiskey 360 piece screw kit. I will have a link in the description down below. But pretty much you're going to need the 16 millimeter screws, which they're in this top right corner. And go ahead and I'm going to pull out four of them real quick. It also does come with an Allen wrench if you do not have the tool. So if you already have the iFixit kit, you're gonna be good as gold. Uh, we can place this box off the side. This has nothing in it anymore. I already took out this box that comes on top. All right, guys, so you're gonna open up your Noctua kit. If you buy this cooler, you need to make sure it has the Intel and AMD brackets in it. They do sell these coolers with either or, sometimes only AMD, sometimes only Intel. You want the kit that has both. If you go inside here, you are going to pick out the baggie for AMD and you are going to get the white little uh, standoffs out of here. You're going to need those. And then you're going to grab the Intel brackets that look like a half C with a little wing. When they install, if you install these backwards in there, the, the CPU cooler will not fit. So if you flip them around like that, they're too close. If you flip them around like that, they're correct. That's why Tech Nitwit is such a nitwit, he put arrows on them so I know how to install them. Something that's gonna be the most important is gonna be your thermal paste. You can try the IC uh, carbon pads, they are known to work. I have uh, thermal, thermal uh, what are they called? I got it right here. IC graphite thermal pad. Uh, they are known to work. I have not done any tests with them. Other people say they get awesome results. This saves you from having to do the thermal paste application. And uh, some people don't feel comfortable. They don't feel they're, they're either they're putting too much or not enough. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can get these. And uh, they have 40 millimeter, uh, 40 by 40 millimeter, uh, and 30 by 30. A 30 by 30 will work for this guy but the 40 by 40 is for the larger CPUs. I am gonna upgrade the fan on this guy really quick. How that is done, you pretty much pull these clips and this fan comes off. In this case, the way this is positioned, it's blowing. So if this is on the CPU, it's blowing upward. I found that flipping the fan around and sucking is actually better for this CPU heat sink than pushing. So just be aware, I'm gonna upgrade on an upgrade guys but I'm gonna grab this industrial PPC fan. It's a 3000 watt, uh, 3000 watt, 3000 RPM knock to a fan. This thing uh, sounds like you're about to achieve a lower earth orbit when it kicks off, but you wanna keep your CPU cool, large and in charge, and this is what you want. Yeah, back to thermal paste. I like Coolmaster. They do make a bigger one. Uh, I couldn't find them without being the wider applicator. People were having with the problems with the wider applicator because it was uh, getting dry and stuff like that. And thermal paste, you kind of want to keep it uh, moist. Otherwise, things don't uh, work together very good. You know, you end up pulling the CPU off the, the board and it sucks. Does come with the thermal paste applicator to spread it across the top of the CPU heatsink or CPU die. Sorry, not the heatsink, the die. Pull these off. These are just little clips. If you do the fan upgrade like I did, which you're doing cooling, you might as well do it all the way, but it is your choice. It still works really good with this uh, fan. You're only gonna gain between one and three Celsius if you put the other fan on there. So if you look on here, how you can tell which way this fan blows 
is Noctua has done us a favor and they got an arrow pointing which, it, which way it turns and which direction it goes. So we said we want it sucking into the cooler, so we want this side of the fan to be like that. And of course when we install this cooler, it's gonna be like that. So we want the wire to come out the side that the heat pipes are not bent on. And this is pretty simple, you just grab this and snap it into your fans, snap the other side in. And then turn it from my zoom so you guys can see it. And then you just equal pressure on both sides and it latches down and in. As long as you got the fan lined up and you're not a tech nitwit. There we go. And it snaps in on both sides. How you're gonna get the fan in the front to work, you have to order these Chromax. You can get any color you want. They got green, blue, red, pink, purple, black, silver, gray. I just got red because it was the first thing that popped up, but you are gonna need three of these guys. And this is for the forward fan. I did find something very, very interesting about trying to put a fan in this front intake. I wanna warn you guys about. I actually seen um, worse thermals with the fan in this intake with the dual uh, fan GPU than if I put the fan up front. So just FYI, I'm putting my fan right here and I'm upgrading the stock fan. They are both 92 millimeter fans, so just FYI. Anyways guys, I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff unboxed and get everything set up to get installed in the PC. All right guys, I'm just gonna jump right into this. We are gonna get the side off. I already have the screw back here undone. I'm sure you guys already know how to take your side off. It is a fill or no, it is a T5 Torx head. I'm gonna go ahead and pull your side off. I'm gonna pull the GPU off. You do not have to. I'm only doing that so I can get the GoPro in there. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna start is by taking these three tabs off right here. And it's gonna swing down like a door. And then you're gonna have a wire right here we're gonna pop up. And that's gonna come out. And then set this off to the side. And we are gonna put our fan up here. Uh, one quick thing I do wanna say with this cooler, you're gonna get between a 10 and 13 Celsius difference with this CPU heatsink. We are gonna take three of these Redux Wonderfulness uh, anti-vibration guys, and we are gonna come to the front, and I got them marked off with some black, and we are gonna make sure this is sucking inward. And then we are just gonna go and make sure the wire is down, so our fan is pulling in air and pushing it out that way. We know by our arrows on the side right here. And you're gonna want the fan to go in where it looks like this. And you're gonna find some of these holes. It is one, one, two, three, four holes down on this inside. And it's one, two, three, four, five holes down on the very edge of the case. And you can get the nubby through. It's kind of hard. Go ahead and get the nubby through on all three of these guys. And I'm actually surprised how well these do hold. And you could use a, a needle nose or something to assist yourself with these. And then when you get it through, you're going to kind of stretch them out and jiggle them back and forth, and then it'll snap in. And the fan will come nice and tight. And there we go. That is pretty much done right there. I'm going to leave this front off so I can see when I line my CPU heatsink up and their anti-vibration mount. So if this fan vibrates or anything like that, it dampens it. Our next thing we're gonna do is come to the back here and we have three screws. We need a normal T2 Phillips. Sorry, not T2, number two Phillips. And there's three fan screws here. And just set those off to the side. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go inside here, right here, and you're gonna pull this wire off. Go ahead and get your fan out of your way and pull the wire straight out. This is the stock fan that we are going to put off to the side. And then this is going to exhaust. So we are going to go here and look at our lines and we want to see the arrows pointing out. So that's with the blades this way. This is going to be sucking in and pushing out. We're going to make sure the line is towards the rear, but we're first going to plug this in and the tabs are going to go towards the front of the case. So when you're going in there, I'll make sure that this snaps on here correctly. And there we go, that's snapped on. And there is a little bump, because this doesn't only it doesn't have all four screws, there's a little bump that holds it. And then I shove the wire underneath it. Kinda for airflow, you can do that last. And we'll go ahead and spin this around. 
you guys can see what I'm doing. Make sure all three holes line up. Get your screws started. It's going to be kind of hard at first because they do not put threads in the fans. Get all three started. And just be aware you do not need to take the GPU out to do this. I did it for the sake of filming. So you're going to want to keep your fan, your fan. You're going to want to keep your hand on the back of the fan. Technically, you're crazy sometimes, I tell you. And good pressure on the screwdriver because you're, you're making your own threads. Feels like you're going to strip it, but it's... It's making its own threads. Trust me, if you have to do this a second time with the same fan, it's a lot easier. Just make sure it's uh, nice and snug. And then our last skirt. And that is the fan upgrade done. Technically, you're lying. The fan upgrade ain't done. Jesus. Now we're going to remove the stock Intel heatsink, which is uh, actually on an AMD. We're going to need a T5 Torx head for this. So go ahead and grab that wire right there. It's kind of hard to see. There you go. And then we're going to take this heat sink out. So you want to do kitty corners when you take this out. Kind of keep some pressure on it. Uh, if you're doing this like me at a weird angle. So it doesn't go fall out flying into the bottom of the case. And that's out. So you're going to want to wipe the old thermal paste off before you apply the new heat sink. Okay, so this is where we're going to grab our four standoffs. And we're going to plop them on down in here. Of course, you want to make sure you clean up the CPU first. Uh, some isotropical alcohol or uh, or just a piece of paper toweling. I like isotropical alcohol because it makes it much easier. But this thermal paste has been applied recently. So it is still a little bit gooey. But you want to get it nice and clean. And there you go. That's nice and clean. So we're going to get these guys in here. Make sure this bracket is facing outward. So when you install this, you want the one on the top of the case to be this way and the other one on the bottom of the case to be like that. So you install them like that. And then of course I'm going for the middle hole on both of them because there are three different holes. And again, the screws that I got are Allen heads, but they also work with the Torxes that are in your kit. And just go ahead and get them on there hand tight and then we'll use a uh, some type of screwdriver to secure them the rest of the way. Uh, before you secure both sides down, make sure both are threaded in there. And then comes the real fun part, putting thermal paste on. Normally when I do this, I do one big glob in the middle about pea size. Or a little bit smaller than a pea. Then I come out on each corner and just do a real small dabby on each corner. Like real, real small. It might look pretty large on, on the camera, but the, the middle one's gonna be probably about half a pea size, and then the outside corner is just a little bit of a glob. Uh, I just like to be able to get a full coverage. It gets the best uh, heat uh, dissipation off the CPU cooler. Pretty much this is gonna be fun from here. One thing I didn't mention is this comes with your uh, Noctua install kit. You're gonna wanna pull this out of the box, and we are gonna install this bad mamma jamma of a cooler like that. But first, we need to hook up our other fan. So we are gonna grab our three-way fan splitter and the tabs right here go towards the bottom of the case. And then we wanna find the one that has four pins. And we found it. So that's our CPU cooler. We can hook up our fan, which is gonna be on one of the other three pins and then tuck these guys in here and under this other fan so they're up and out of our way and not in the way of other cooling. And then this is for our fan heatsink which the industrial fan, the line is really long. If you want to make this a little bit easier on yourself, the kit that comes with this does have an extension. You can use it if you want. If it makes it easier for you to do the install, you're just going to have extra line in your case. And we are going to go ahead and get this guy in here. And it is super hard to see. But if you, I can see from the angle right here that I got the bottom screw. And then the top screw, I'm just going to make sure that the, the heat sink looks square. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to grab this because I know that the bottom one is lined up. I'm going to see if this one is threading because you literally cannot see in here. As long as this starts to thread down, which it is, then we are lined up. And it's really hard to show this to you guys, but you have to go through the heat sink and catch the Phillips at the bottom with your screwdriver. 
the best way I can explain it. And as long as uh, we're on there, we can sink this guy down there. These are the type of screws that bottom out of the way, so you want to make sure that they go until they stop. There's a spring that sets the tension. There we go, that one stopped. Go ahead and tuck your other wire underneath your fan so it uh, doesn't block any cooling, and then you're good to go. Guys, that is pretty much this bad mamma jamma of a cooler installed. And uh, get your GPU back in if you took it out to make it easier for yourself. If not, I, I can do it without it. It's kind of like shooting in the dark and hoping to hit a bullseye. All right, guys. Uh, your install is pretty much done here, and this is the CPU cooler installed. Um, these two fans right here are 92 millimeter. This guy is about 80 bones. This takes a 140 millimeter fan. This is a 3000 RPM fan we put on here as an upgrade. So with this bad mamma jam of a cooler, uh, you see about a 13C difference and a 5 Celsius difference on the GPU because of radiant heat. Um, other than that, the stock GPU and CPU were running the stock Intel cooler, which is this guy, 85 to 87 Celsius, and the GPU was 68 to 69 Celsius. So with the stress test with this big cooler, you're also going to see a drop in your GPU. We were running 74 to 63 Celsius. CPU was 74, GPU was 63. All right, guys, if you want to see other cool videos like this on this channel, uh, come and subscribe and like and comment. If you have any questions about this install or other installs that you are trying to do, I'm around all the time. Throw them down in the comment section below, and I'll try to get to them in a timely manner, guys. This was the Tech Knitwit video, and I hope you liked it, y'all.